Welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for a discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and special guests from around the industry. I am playing the part of host this week. My name is Marcus Stewart, and I'm joined by an amazing supporting cast, also playing the roles of of co-hosts, first and foremost, the flame-haired games writer himself, Mr. Kyle Hilliard. Hello, sir. Right. Sure, yeah. You're not playing a host, Marcus. You are the host. You gotta, like, embrace, you know? like. You're... Oh, I am? It's like method acting? Like, I have to, like... I, I've, I've spent, like, uh, parts of my life outside of this podcast pretending yeah. to be the host. Okay. You are finally the host. You, you're you in charge. You're the captain now. Yeah, I... Oh, you're right. I am the captain. Should I do the thing? Yeah, that's... <laughs> the menacing the the eye thing should i do that <laughs> just send that to alex without context just context just send him like a dm that's like just that picture of that guy <laughs> He'll get it. i was just gonna sabotage his, his flight plan so that he just can never come back oh that works too uh which is why he's not here by the way he's out uh traveling on assignment uh some might say he's not even i don't think he's in this continent nope. even right now he's mm-hmm. he's elsewhere on a a big old adventure but it's fine, because we've got some wonderful co-hosts. We're joined by Charles Hart. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm here to audition for the role of co-host. <laughs> I have prepor- uh, pre- prepared I've prepared a monologue. Ooh, bad okay. start. Bad start. <laughs> 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 uh, I said I prepared a monologue. I totally lied about that. Um, and that was my monologue. It was me pretending that I didn't prepare a monologue. That's just a few of my acting chops. Uh, please hire me. Beautiful. Okay, I was looking for the role of unprepared podcast guest, <laughs> so he passed with flying colors. <laughs> and are joined by a special guest, Elijah Gonzalez. Hello, sir. How are you? What's going on? Doing well. I'm here today as the uh, resident Street Fighter Pundit, so I hope I can fulfill my role admirably. You know, I'm glad you said that because, you know, uh, for those that haven't seen the Street Fighter 6 reviews are live. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, from what I've seen, it is doing incredibly well, critically. A lot of high scores up to the ceiling, uh, 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 as high as a dragon punch, you might say. You, you uh, could argue. You could argue. Yeah, including yours, because you uh, reviewed the game for us. You gave it a 9.5 out of 10. And I have to say, uh, before we really dive into this, there's really only one way you can kick off a, a Street Fighter discussion, and we only get to do this of what? Twice a decade. How often do they Seven release years. Street Fighter games? Seven years so, since the last one, yeah. Yeah, so just real quick, let me just do this real quick. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. For the audio listener, uh, Marcus is he's going ham, man. He's, going, he's, he's filling up his little video square. Some amazing dancing. Yes, it's here. Uh, well, wow. I guess it's technically not here. It's almost here. Street Fighter Six. It launches uh, this Friday. So by the time you're listening to this, less than what 24 hours away. But like I mentioned, reviews embargo are live. It's a great game. Uh, Elijah, you and, reviewed and there's it. A, there's a beta as well. Is that actively happening? Like people are. Uh, that was last week. Last yeah, week. that was last yeah. week. Yeah. Gotcha. So, All right. Sorry. I, to but people have played it from that and the uh, the oh, other yeah. demo that they they put out. Uh, but yeah, a few of us have been playing it on this call. And Elijah, I'm going to turn it to you. You gave it a nine five, as I mentioned. Tell us all about Street Fighter Six. Why is this game the best thing since sliced bread? Yeah, so I think my really kind of succinct take on Street Fighter VI is that it's the most fully fleshed out um, an entry in the series has been maybe ever at launch. Mm. Uh, So kind of both in terms of what it's giving people that aren't as interested in the competitive side of things, but then also for people that are. Um, And in, in a lot of ways, it kind of feels like a pretty direct rebuttal to what happened with Street Fighter V. So, like I I kind of mentioned, that game came out seven years ago now, and at launch it was not very well received. Uh, It was kind of missing a lot of just core stuff that you expect from a fighting game. Uh, It didn't have a... That's very polite of you, Elijah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, like, honestly, I'm a big Street Fighter fan, and I barely played Street Fighter V because of how poorly it launched. Because by the time it got to the state where I would be interested in it, I just... 
had moved on, so I really haven't touched it. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, the problem there was, like, the core mechanics weren't great at launch, it didn't have that many characters, it didn't have a story mode, um, and they, I mean, I guess to Capcom's credit, they really tried to fix it. Uh, they supported it the last seven years. They added 30 characters, I just looked it up, uh, oh. which is almost kind of a problem, because, like, I got into that game a little bit later, and by the time I started playing it, there was just so many matchups to learn and, like, weird stuff with uh, having there have been so many characters and stuff. But, um, yeah, Street Fighter V, it was kind of always playing catch-up. Mm. And so, like, I, I feel like with Street Fighter VI... Um, this one was really given the time uh, to kind of be a really fully featured game. Uh, and it clearly was a direct response to people's complaints about the last game. It, it just has so much stuff kind of at every level. Um, there's, you know, arcade mode. There's this really extensive story mode called World Tour, which is like a semi-open world thing that I'll get into more in a second. Um, it has like party modes that you can change the win conditions for the game and like add items and stuff like at Smash Bros. Um, so oh, there's just like okay. a lot, there's a lot here and kind of for the more competitive side of things, uh, there's a really extensive training mode, great online play, um, mm -hmm. really smooth, uh, net code that is rollback net code for anyone who, uh, is more privy to like, uh, fighting game stuff. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's really, it feels like the full package, um, to me. I, I really want to know about the single player stuff. Yep. Like, is that, is it an engaging story? As someone who's, like, really, I'm not a Street Fighter guy. I'm really not a fighting game guy. I the I played 6 this morning. This was, like, my preparation for the, I played uh, Cammy's, like, arcade campaign, which is, like, four okay. fights. So I'm a, I'm an expert uh, on par with yeah. Elijah. I know the game very right. well. But that's that was kind of the thing that I was, like, if there's anything that's going to get me in the door for Street Fighter, truly for the first time, it's going to be a single-player campaign with sort of a fun story. Does that exist here? Is it like is it worthwhile? Yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, so the mode here is a uh, really extensive. It's basically like a semi open world um, kind of thing. I think like an okay point of comparison is the Yakuza games or the Like a Dragon games. I, I don't think the writing is nearly as sharp here, but in terms of format, it's like a semi open world, bunch of side quests, RPG light mechanics. Um, it's also like really long it took me around 28 hours to get to to credits and i, yeah, I was doing I did, like i was doing side stuff but still like yeah i did a double take when i i read your review and i was like really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's over yeah. 20 hours and i've started playing it i'm on i'm on chapter four which is probably like two-ish hours in if you mainline it yeah and just the idea that it's like i've barely scratched the surface of what this is is kind of like exciting and also a little daunting <laughs> yeah and so I, I think that um, where it fits into, like, the single-player fighting game landscape, I think Mortal Kombat kind of still has the corner on, like, hey, I literally do not want to ever play against another person, and I want something that's really good, because those games have really, really good storytelling, despite it's just about people punching each other in the head in, in various ways. And um, I, I think that kind of the rub here is that I don't think the overarching storytelling in the World Tour mode is that great. But I think it's a pretty fun... They do some clever things to make it so that fighting against computers is engaging. Because I think, like, a problem with fighting game single-player modes is, like, especially if you're more tuned to playing things against other people, if you're kind of more on the competitive side of things, going against computers doesn't really cut it because it's, like, you're used to... The most engaging element of fighting games to me personally is, like, figuring out what your opponent's doing, kind of trying to counteract their strategies and stuff like that. And that usually doesn't really exist when you're fighting um, in these single player modes. What they do here to kind of get around it is that um, like in RPG fashion, like there are different enemy types that you'll encounter in the world. And those enemy types have like specific move sets that they'll pull from. And so it's like, they're, they're kind of like all leading into like a gimmick where like you'll be against like a big burly dude and he's like, he's grapple man. He wants to run up to you and grab you. And so like, mm. because it has these like pretty telegraphed, uh, move sets it makes it so that it kind of captures a little bit of that element of fighting against other people where you're like you're like oh your game plan is this i'm trying to get around it this way um and so like the fights themselves i was kind of expecting it to be like what you see in other uh single player fighting game stuff which is not that engaging and i was pretty surprised by how fun i found it for the most part um for kind of the story so it, it's following kind of like uh, a player-created avatar, self-insert character kind of thing. 
And I don't know if you guys have seen some of the stuff with the avatar creator in this game. It, oh, it's really, yeah. <laughs> it can it can hack some true abominations. It is I've, it's very I've extensive. I've seen the stupidest things. I haven't yeah. yet to see anybody make like, oh, this this is my guy. He looks pretty cool. It's like no, this, it's just all the ugliest, like most terrible. I um, I created a John Wick in okay. my game. <laughs> And, and that's my new headcanon is just this is his origin. Like, this is how he got so good at fighting was training with Chun-Li and, and Ryu. <laughs> and I think I think it makes perfect sense, really. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it kind of falls into the problem of a lot of games where you have like a self-insert character where like the protagonist is just kind of awkwardly in all these cutscenes, not really speaking and just kind of pantomiming. Um, and I, I think that some of the the writing with the the main storyline is kind of rough and not super interesting. Basically, the entire plot is you trying to find... Uh, you have, like, this rival character that's introduced at the start of the game, and more or less the entire plot of the game is, like, trying to track them down and figure out what's happening with them. Um, the Pokemon approach. It, it That is actually the exact... I'm like, oh, it's oh, really? Gary. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, but... The story like tries to go to some interesting places near the end and like i think people will see what i'm talking about when they see it themselves there's like some pretty it, it gets into like some surprisingly politically charged stuff that has the potential to be interesting but it, it just doesn't quite have enough uh it doesn't really have the chops to to pull it off and um that's it's kind of unfortunate politically charged street fighter i'm trying it, to <laughs> no, it's, it's it's surprising you'll see what i'm saying if you get to the, near the end of the game you'll be like wait that's what this game is about it, there's like an NGO stealing money from a developing nation. There's a lot of stuff going on. I, okay. I, again, I don't think it really follows through on it in the way I wanted it to. Um, but it, it's kind of interesting. But um, the meat of what you're doing, I guess I should explain, is like you're kind of going around picking fights with random people. You can fight almost any person you see in this game. Uh, I guess like there's kind of a canonical reason for it because it takes place in um, a Metro City, which is the setting of Final Fight. So like I guess in this world, just everyone everyone likes to throw hands. They're just they're they're used to it. It's what they do. Yeah, like literally every single person. <laughs> every every single you. There's like a mechanic where like you can get the first punch on people to get an advantage in a fight, but it creates these like really nasty situations where you just sneak up behind someone and like shuriken them in the back of the head. And it's like, are they okay? I don't think they're okay. You just punch this random person. That is, um, I've been, I I made the Pokemon joke, but this is like. Pokemon. This is Pokemon because it is, like, yeah. that's the thing yep. about Pokemon is everyone in that world loves fighting Pokemon, but here yeah. they just remove the middleman and it's like, no, we just fight each other here. That's funny. Yeah, at least they don't stop you in the street when you cross eyes with them. At least yeah. you kind of have to like <laughs> yeah. ask them to fight or punch them in the face from behind. <laughs> some, some people will just run at you at full speed True. and and punch you in the head, and so yeah, it, it's a uh, it, it's very funny. But I, I think the game um, is at its strongest on the writing front when it's kind of being more wacky and kind of leaning more into that kind of yakuza like tone where like a lot of the side missions are actually legitimately kind of funny and have the uh have the sense of like oh this is just a city full of all these endearing weirdos who are obsessed with punching people a lot um like at one point i met a guy named kenny masters who is just like a ken weeb and he just like talks about how cool ken is uh he's just <laughs> like ken and if you fight him he uses ken's fight style um the game the game also opens where they're like they're playing Street Fighter arcade machines? Are they playing Street Fighter Six? Like, is or I, am I just am I don't even like go that route? Is that kind of the answer? <laughs> like, don't even worry about that part of it. Well, there's like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think they're playing Street Fighter in the world. I think in the open world, I don't think I found an arcade cabinet. There is like okay. the lo a lobby system where like there you take your avatar and you play Street Fighter against other people at the little like arcade kiosk or whatever. Mm. Um. But this game does have like a weird relationship with the characters of the main cast where like the characters in the main cast are like these larger than life figures in the story. And so like the way the story works is that uh, you're kind of going from character to character and learning their fight styles. And this is actually probably my favorite element of, of the thing mechanically here is that um, you basically like mix and match the different move sets of the characters from the main cast into like a Frankenstein's monster character that like by the end of the game i had like a character that like uh had a really fast move speed um it, it, they could command grab they could teleport they had uh, projectiles and shuriokens so you, you can just like create this like monster of a character that is doing stuff that like flies in the face of how fighting game balance is supposed to work um <laughs> is really cool and like 
you know, it, it has like typical RPG stuff. You're leveling up your character, you're getting equipment or whatever that improves your stats and stuff. Um, and yeah. a cool thing is like each mission or each fight, um, every enemy fighter has like a little mission associated with them. And it's usually like a mission designed to counter their play style sort of. Um, mm. And if you fulfill those, you get like, uh, you know, in-game rewards that can help you uh, level up your guy more or whatever. Yeah. I've um, spent so much time trying to do those little objectives just yep. to get black. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to get black dye because I'm trying to complete mm. the John Wick look where I bought the the <laughs> dress shirt with the tie and the slacks, but they're not black. So I've been actively. And what's cool is that you can check to see what each uh, character rewards before you fight them. So I've just been literally like hitting that button like okay what are you what are you gonna give me you don't have black dye okay i don't care and then trying to find the people that have it and then just uh kick the crap out of them <clears throat> yeah it, it's pretty cool and like those little objectives also in kind of a subtle way are like a form of tutorialization so i i think like it's very clear the way that capcom is thinking about this mode is they're trying to create a pipeline to get people from being like i don't really know how street fighter works or fighting games into like playing it against other people in some form and so like there's a lot of forms of subtle and not so subtle tutorialization here where the way the uh, the enemy moves work with like their he their heavily telegraphed stuff um, it's kind of trying to like give you uh, a segue into understanding how like oh like when you're fighting against an opponent every move's going to have like a counter or like a weakness and it's important to exploit those um, and so everything about the world tour is kind of guiding you towards understanding the underlying principles of fighting games in a way that is less boring than the tutorial. The game has a tutorial. It's very boring. I mean, I it's probably extra boring for me because like I already know this stuff or whatever. But I think even for people that are new, it's going to be kind of boring. And so I, I think it's important to have these kind of more fun ways of tutorializing um, in the game. And so I, I think it, it's doing a pretty solid job of that. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, would you recommend that newcomers or just inexperienced players maybe start with World Tour as opposed to jumping into sort of like the regular tutorial? That's a good question. I think that, like, do the tutorial. If you're really bored, just stop doing it and play World Tour, because it's going to touch on all that stuff anyway in a kind of a more natural way. Um, I think, like, some people will, like, want to know, like, what the mechanics are or whatever from the, the from the jump, but I think a lot of people will be kind of... Fighting games are pretty complicated sometimes, so, like, I think that the more natural approach of doing it through the story is, like, a really good way to go. Um, yeah, it also defaults you at with the modern control scheme, which is the more sort of like simplified, like auto combo uh, system in World Tour. Like you play for a bit with that before they give you the choice if you want to switch to the classic uh, scheme, which is nice. For sure, yeah, they're they're definitely trying to push the the modern control scheme. I think it's like it's a solid way of of getting people past like the mechanical or the uh execution barrier of like initially getting into a fighting game where you have to do like dragon punch motions and and whatnot and quarter circles um yeah and it's actually kind of interesting because the 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 uh the control scheme is causing some amount of controversy among competitive players some of who some of whom think that it is like it has such strengths that it may actually become just better for competitive play than the mm. uh, the classic control scheme, which is pretty surprising. Because like the reason people are saying that is because it lets you do uh, like one button supers and specials. Basically, like you can do a super faster with the modern control scheme than any person could ever do it with mm. the older control scheme, just because there's less inputs to do. Basically, um, and so what? that's causing some amount of like. There's a bunch of downsides with the modern control scheme too. Is well, I also I feel like that classic control, and I'm not a fighting game guy, but so like I speak with no authority here. But it did. It always kind of felt like that that old, you know, the original classic control scheme was designed around like an arcade cabinet, right? Oh, yeah. And so it's like it's nice for them, Capcom, to kind of look at it and be like, well, what if we did have people playing with a controller on modern platforms and sort of reevaluating how a fighting game works in that way. I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's worse, but it's like I, I like that they're at least considering. It's like that we don't we don't have to stick to the old ways necessarily. Like why not try something a little different? Can I can I ask because I I haven't played it at all, but it, it's modern control scheme is like the wording they use. Is it easier? Like does it make it easier to play the game, or is it just like a different way of doing it? I think at the absolute beginner level, it makes it easier. But then it kind of reaches a weird point where when you're trying to do some of the stuff that Classic can do, 
it almost becomes harder. I, I, I'll just explain how it works, I guess. So, like, traditional fighting games, or t- traditional Street Fighter, is a six-button game. You have uh, the top row is is uh, punches, the bottom row is kicks, and you have light, medium, and heavy. So you have six buttons. With the modern control scheme, it, it basically, like, uh, squishes all of those attacks into three buttons, so you have just light, medium, and heavy, and it will kind of choose for you if it's doing a kick or a punch. Mm. Um, so you have less moves with the modern control scheme. However, uh, it makes it so that you can do auto combos, uh, so you just like press one button. You hold a button down, and then you hit another button, and then it'll just do a combo for you, um, which I think gets people over like the hurdle of learning the combos. Street Fighter combos are like, they're a little tougher than combos in a lot of other fighting games like your your guilty gears and stuff because they rely a lot on on links which is like basically timing you have to time the combo uh more precisely than a lot of other fighting games like mortal Kombat lets you just kind of hit the buttons in sequence and the combo comes out um where street fighter takes a little more timing so like all this stuff with modern is to kind of just get people over that execution barrier and like understand maybe get, get into like the decision making part of the game which is like really where everyone actually wants to be with a fighting mm-hmm. game is you want to get past that execution barrier level and be at the point where you're you're making interesting choices and you're actually like fighting back and forth uh in some fashion um yeah like so i just, think modern you just want to throw a hadouken as opposed to like, <laughs> getting the hang yeah. of doing the hadouken action right yeah right. yeah right yeah it's like it's more about strategy like when should i do a hadouken rather than how do i do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it, exactly. it's nice because even uh alex van aiken who's been playing the game a lot uh, playing with him last year at Summer Games Fest, which was like the first time the game was playable, and he's not a fighting game fan either. And to me, that was like the first, like, like the best sell of the modern control scheme because I'm an experienced player. I love Street Fighter, and when we played against each other, he was using modern, and he was able to hang with me. And even in the f- like short few rounds, I could see him learning. Like mm. and it was like once he kind of figured <laughs> out, like, okay, if I hit just this and this okay, I'll do this combo or I'll do this projectile. And I could see him already transitioning into learning how to do that stuff like strategically of like, when should I do it rather than fumbling with the controls. And I know he's told me even now that he's like, he's already graduated to the classic scheme because he's been playing it so much, uh, you know, this pre-release. And it's like, okay, that's that's awesome. Like, it's it's just cool to have that that sort of like, I, I hate to say training wheels because that makes it, <laughs> it kind of feel like it's talking down. To it. No, I need training wheels, but... man. Like if I'm, if I'm going <laughs> on this, give me, give me like too many training wheels, you know. <laughs> just a big, just one button does everything. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Let's do version. it. But yeah, I, I, and to your point about like the, I guess competitive ramifications. I wonder. I don't know if Capcom has said anything about this because I know they've announced that this is going to be at Evo. Like I would imagine you probably just do like separate brackets for each scheme, I- assuming Modern gets any like like attention at all like i would imagine if it's just not classic only they would just divide those two player bases so they actually have announced what they're doing they're basically just making it so that you can play modern in tournament and there's no there's no delineation at all and so that oh, that's really? like oh, yeah so that that's why the pro players like um i think like i'm not sure if daigo is like one of the proponents of this but he's saying that like modern is a really viable thing because like it lets you just do things that are literally physically impossible yeah. with uh playing on like the classic scheme which is like reacting really fast with supers in a way that you just can't do on stick or on uh classic control schemes i mean it's funny because you mentioned daigo and it's like i wonder if this will also have the sort of like like other effect of like he's an older player you know the older you get you're gonna lose just your reflexes like could it be good for also the experienced crowd that has just sort of aging out of the competitive Mm. scheme a way to, to sort of keep them in the scene at this point too so it's it's funny you mentioned Daigo. He actually made top eight in Street Fighter V at Evo this last year. And right. like I think this like points to like a cool thing about fighting games is like there is that reaction element, you're totally right, where like younger players will have better reactions in some situations. But like especially like Street Fighter is like a more deliberate game in a way that I think like one of the coolest things to fighting games about uh, for fighting games for me is like other other games of like I passed my prime and what I could possibly do at a shooter. You know, like, just knowing, yeah. like, it doesn't really matter, but, like, just knowing that's kind of a bummer. Whereas with, like, fighting games, it's, like, you can kind of just play them, like, forever. Because although you lose the reactions, like, a lot of, like, pro players that are super experienced just have, they just have such a feel for these games that, like, they can get super good super fast at them. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, I think that modern, but you are right that modern gives you, like, kind of an execution buffer that just makes it so that you can 
react to certain things faster. Um, so I, I'm really curious how it's going to shake out. I honestly, my my uh, shoot from the hip guess is that like there will be some people that will use it, but I think classic just gives you so much more like control over your move set that for at least most characters, I think it'll be what people use. Maybe some characters like you don't need the moves that you lose with modern as much. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah. Awesome. And real quick, uh, just for the roster, do you have a favorite uh, uh, character of the, the new cast or in general? Yeah, so I've been playing uh, a lot of Jury, um, who, I mean, she's from 4, I think. but Yeah, 4. Yeah, she she's uh, she's very good, I think, in this game. I, I think, like, in general with the characters, like, the roster has a good variety of play styles that you can play. Um, they're all, like, pretty complex but not in a way that feels overwhelming i'd say like for instance like chun li uh she has like basically all of her big moves from previous games but she also has like a stance you can go into that gives her access to more attacks and so like it, it feels like a lot of modern fighting games are kind of going in the direction of reducing complexity i think to get more people in the door and i i like street fighter 6's approach which is that the complexity is still there it's just kind of more on specific characters and like there's more there's other characters that are just kind of more beginner friendly that like are clearly designed so that they go better with the modern control scheme in some ways where like they have easier combos to do and things like that um and so like i, I think it's doing a good job of like having a lot of play styles while still uh you know making it so that there's like that depth there so it's yeah. pretty sick yeah for sure i've uh I've I've taken a liking to a few of the new characters. I think I'm going to focus on Kimberly right okay, now nice. as sort yeah. of like my my main, uh, at least of the new cast because I just I I just love her. <laughs> yeah. She's a lot of fun to play with. So uh, my goal is to uh, take her up against uh, Alex Van Aken's Chun Li because that's like his main, and sort of seeing you know what happens. See who stands tall when the dust clears. Uh, Charles, Kyle, will you guys be checking out Street Fighter Six at all? I played a little this morning. I played through Cammy's like arcade mode um, and saw credits, so I beat it. So yeah, I'm good. what you're done <laughs> real quick? Why is Cammy like a, a favorite for you, or is it just random? Nope. Like why Cammy? Honestly, like this is how Street Fighter literate I am. I just kind of like looked at every character, and I was just like, she looks cool. I didn't even realize she was like Cammy because she's been redesigned a fair bit. But I wasn't. Right. It was not because I was like. Oh yeah, let me play as Cammy, that classic character. I was like, oh, I like her look. I'm gonna try her. So, <laughs> I mean, fair enough. I was just I was yeah. curious. I, I Cammy's um, great. I so. mean, I, I, fighting games are weird for me. Like, I like Smash. I really got into Dead or Alive Four back in the day. That's my <laughs> big fighting game. I, it was the game I had in my college dorm, right? Which is like, so I played it with my roommates all the time. We played Dead or Alive Four. Um, but since then, I've never really like gotten deep into a fighting game, but. The, the the excitement around Street Fighter Six is so red hot that like I I'm gonna try the single player campaign I'm gonna make a character if I can tear myself away from Tears of the Kingdom I'm still <laughs> staying up super late every well, night playing I'm like 140 what if you, hours in at this point what if you just make Link in Street Fighter and then it's kind of like you're <laughs> never hack. yeah mm. get both it's like you never left I'm making a Soul Calibur throwback right yeah. or make make your own Pokemon Kyle. And then it's just a Pokemon game, but you're playing as the Pokemon. Mm. See, these are good. Po Pokemon tournament too. Like Hitmon Lee or Hitmon Chan. Those are basically fighting game <laughs> characters. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a little, but there's a little window here between Tears of the Kingdom and Final Fantasy 16, where maybe I can wedge in a Street Fighter. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, this is this is a packed couple of weeks. Like it's a crazy yeah. year. It's it's nuts. Yeah. Especially, I mean, just for fighting games, we got MK coming out September. We got Tekken coming eventually. Yeah. <laughs> potentially Probably, I feel like this year, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Beta yeah. teased, right? Isn't there like a rumor of a beta happening for Tekken? It, or yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that was officially teased, but some okay. something's out there that some some people did some digging around and were like, beta. Hmm. Uh, that's what they sounded like when they. Found <laughs> yeah, <it>. Yoda <laughs> was asking about the Tekken Eight beta. Tekken <laughs> yeah. um, beta, you're sorry. I think I am probably not gonna get super into it, but I am still very excited to watch it. This is definitely a thing where I'm like, it's weird to be excited for a game to have come out, but not because I want to play it at all. I I think I love the like, I don't know, it's like dancing, watching people play fighting games. Like it's, I, I just think it's really cool. Um, 
and uh, 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 I think I I'm definitely more interested. The only fighting game I really got into was Injustice One and Two, um, and every time I've been like, I should play Mortal Kombat because it's the same guys. It feels similar enough. I just never have. But maybe this new Mortal Kombat is is the thing that gets me into fighting games, and then I try more stuff. But um, I'm very excited to watch this game evolve at like a competitive level and knowing also that it's i mean street fighter has been around forever so it's it's a thing that like from the get-go it's going to be very fun to watch and it's only going to get more interesting so hell yeah yeah i'm excited to keep playing it myself i got much for it launches uh friday june 2nd uh check out elijah's review up on gameinformer.com thanks so much elijah for joining us and uh, before you head out, can you uh, let us know where to find you and where uh, social media as well? And feel free to uh, plug anything that you're working on. For sure. Uh, I'm on the Hell site Twitter at Eli underscore Gonzalez 11. Um, I'm a freelancer. I write for a bunch of places like Pace Magazine and uh, elsewhere. Um, but yeah. Awesome. And yeah, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk all things Summer Game Fest, including giving our predictions for what we hope slash expect to see when everything goes down uh, the week of June 8th. So we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the Game Informer show. And we are moving on to our next segment where we are going to discuss Summer Games Fest. Guys, do you have the... The goosebumps that I have. Do you have the the hairs rising on your skin that at least I get as a game journalist this time of year when you realize the amount of uh, work that we have to do? <laughs> I let's see. I, so I've been doing this. I mean, Marcus, you've been doing it for a while now too. But I've been doing it for a oh, long yeah. time, and there is this tendency to kind of be jaded about it. Be like, Ugh, it's so much. There's so much happening, but like, I still love it, man. It's still so. Oh, like, it's it. Yeah, I'm excited. I don't want to make it seem like I'm like, uh, it's yeah. like excitement and like mild anxiety, but it's like mostly like excitement. Well, the, it's like the, PlayStation, Christmas. the PlayStation show, which we didn't end up talking about last week just because of the recording right. schedule was mm. a moment where like it started and I was like, oh, this we're in E3 like this. Is yeah, it, you know, it's like one solid snake showed up during the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. I was like, oh, right. This is the time for super exciting stuff to happen. Right. Solid because, Snake, the harbinger of E3, uh, as he's always been known very as. much my most exciting as as much as I have reservations about Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta or Metal Gear Solid Delta. Excuse me. They dropped the three um, mm. with the lack of Kojima's involvement. Far and away, the thing I was most like, yes, I want this. Please give me this. Wait, do you think that's why they dropped the three? Because could, I just assume they dropped no. the three to not scare away newcomers from being like oh this is the middle of a series when it's actually the earliest in the series so it's safe for yeah, anyone I mean, to play not to go off did not know it was the earliest in the series oh, you I, know that, cool. what you said? i've i've never played a, a metal gear solid game i think i oh. tried i tried one and it was like just confusing enough that i was like i'll come back to this next week and then i never, I never came back <laughs> next to it. week um, i mean it is the one to start with like if they were going to try to get Metal Gear rolling again, Metal Gear Solid 3 is the one to remake because it is the one that you can go in with zero. It is literally mm -hmm. the first in the... Like, even before the NES games and stuff like that, so... Um, but they had some reasoning for... They explained why they used the term Delta because it means change, but not like... Right. But I mean, oh, yeah. PlayStation blog post, I think they yeah, talked about it but, um, on their website, too. Yeah. But I guess that's all... I mean, that's the other thing, too, Marcus. I think you're right, is like it would be better to have a game in the PlayStation and Xbox store called Metal Gear Delta than Metal Gear Solid 3 because, you know what I mean? Like, even maybe you probably know what Metal Gear Solid is, but that 3 would at least prompt you to text a friend to be like, can I start with this one? It's like, if they can eliminate <laughs> yeah. you having to text your friend about that, then that works. You right. know? And that's also ignoring the fact that the Solid series, there's like, technically those are like what games four five six when you after the original metal gear <laughs> one like metal gear solid is that. not the first game in the metal gear series right, despite everyone yeah. thinking it is uh, uh so yeah i don't we got on a weird metal gear tangent but i mean it's yeah. exciting and it's like the harbinger like you mentioned for all of the exciting announcements that are coming across god how many showcases are happening next week like you know i i Call it Summer Game Fest Week because it is the headliner, and there are a few um, like shows under that umbrella. But you know, if you check out our streaming schedule that we have at GameInformer.com, 
uh, beginning from June 1st, uh, everything's happening. Seemingly almost every day up until like, what, like the first two weeks, like June 15th, we got the Xbox showcase, uh, which is also going to be a uh, Starfield showcase. Like, I guess like right after it is a Starfield direct, you know, that's happening the weekend of the 11th, but we have the usual suspects like the PC gaming show, uh, Devolver Digital's uh, showcase just got a date today. Uh, RGG, you know, Ryu, Gakuto, the Yakuza team has their, they're doing another summit. Uh, we have uh, like Final Fantasy 16 is getting some sort of like launch celebration. You've got the Wholesome Games Direct, the Future Game Show. Guys, why can't I hold all of these shows in my hands? You see, this is me trying to, and they're just spilling out. They're overloaded. Yeah. Um, and I, are you guys, uh, before we get into sort of our predictions, are there any shows that you're looking forward to watching the most out of these? Or maybe shows that aren't Summer Games Fest would be the more interesting answer. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I was going to say you're asking uh, how excited we were for this. I'm honestly, I feel like I'm, I'm not super excited only because I feel like there's so much good stuff right now. I'm not even like the, the to look forward in the future. I don't even know what else to be excited for because I have like Zelda right now, and that's so big. Um, they haven't like announced anything yet, but the ones I always get most excited for is Nintendo stuff because I feel like that's like you know where my wildest dreams would come true. So I think <laughs> if if that you know is introduced, I know they're they're very like uh, uh, right while well, they're like a week before it happens, or even the day oh, before it happens. They're like, hey, hours. we're gonna do it. <laughs> Yeah. Lately, um, yeah. If that happens, that'll be my most excited one, um, you, personally. Well, here's a, here's but a, here's a prediction to to discuss. Do you think there'll be one? I I don't think so. You don't I, think so? Not during I, June. Maybe maybe later. Like I think like sure. Nintendo just would want to separate themselves from all of it. I feel like there will be one because, and we talked about this actually. Uh, me and Brian Shea on all things Nintendo last week, where we did a a predictions episode on the hypothetical summer showcase for nintendo but i feel like there would be because their their fall is at least in terms of first party stuff it's pretty sparse like after pikmin 4 mm -hmm. there really there isn't really anything announced and they've done this in years past where their fall schedule is pretty blank and then they do a summer showcase and they're like hey here's a big thing that you had no idea we were working on and it comes out in like three months like right. metroid dread was that <clears throat> uh so I'm expecting that to happen again. I don't know if it'll be in June, but I could see like early July, perhaps. But I, I'm banking on them doing something personally. Okay. I think I think maybe they'll have something during Summer Games Fest, maybe a trailer or two, like Keeley's mm. show. But I don't think we're gonna get a dedicated direct, at, not until like a month later. I would just because I it's like why why try to fight all the other stuff happening? Like we're Nintendo, we can do whatever we want whenever we want. Were they going? Did they pull out of E3, or did they did they ever agree to? In no, E3? they they were one of the ones that formally pulled out. Like they straight okay. up put a thing out saying like, nah, no, just nah, just we're busy. Today. If they would have plans, <laughs> then like theoretically around this time they had something that was going to happen. Um, I, I feel like it happened. I mean, I don't know. Honestly, I, mean, I, to, I don't be clear. Like, yeah. I would love it, but uh, yeah. It's like, why are I you stopping on Charles's enough. hopes and dreams, Kyle? <laughs> I want it badly enough that I don't even want to predict that it won't happen, you know? I, for some reason, this is a thing I have to be the most optimistic about. I mean, yeah, why um, why set the universe up against you like that, yeah. you know? you got to will into existence, but, you know, regardless of whether it happens or not, like you mentioned, we have, a, like, 12 other shows right, <laughs> to, yeah. to watch anyways. And so this is the fun time of year where we all gather together around the, the campfire and we start throwing out the things that we hope to see, the things that we expect to see at not just Summer Games Fest, but for anything, you know, happening during that stretch. And so I figure we're, you know, we'll take turns going around the, uh, the circle here and each share a prediction. And if you want, I know we, we've done this some years and we've done it, you know, and others, but I mean, we could add stakes to this if we want to make this a bet. <laughs> you know, like we didn't do it last year, but I knew in I think it was 2021, we, a steak dinner was on the line, and Ben Reeves won, and we have yet to pay that steak dinner. I know you have to, you have to come up with something we can actually deliver on. Maybe someone yeah. has to the loser. I blame Al Alex Stadnick for that. 
The reader fault. has to read a poem written by someone else on a future episode of the Game Informer show. Or I love. Hey, I'll I'll Should write a poem read for Charles free. Yeah, I was gonna say you're talking to the, <laughs> you the have master to... lyricist here. No, if you <laughs> I, for listeners that don't know this, every time I take a lunch break at work. I write a little song, and it's a parody of an existing song, and it's lunch themed somehow. Yeah, um, and like literally every day. To be clear, like Charles yeah, was uh, handled the the website on a on a Memorial Day. Most of us, none of us, were working that day. Charles still wrote a, a, a song <laughs> about his lunch break. I was Eleanor saw Rigby, too. yeah, <laughs> and I have. It's for me, I guess. That's the important thing. I feel like people have started being like, "Wow, Charles, this is so funny." I'm like, "It's not for you. I'm putting it here just so you can see." <laughs> Stop it. laughing at my song. This <laughs> is not for you. This is me. Uh, so um, should that be the should that be the bet that whoever loses has to perform the song on a podcast? Yeah, let's do that. Perform a and, song, and, and just if one just perform one of your song, yeah, just one of Charles's songs, and maybe okay, yeah, and. It, it, like, if I if I lose or if is it yeah, if you're like, correct Charles, or if you lose, what's the yeah? Is like, this a punishment or is this yeah, a success? If, if you lose, you have to sing one of Charles's parody songs. Okay, it can be one you've already Charles written. Himself? You can write a new one. It's it, you know, it's up to you. If I lose, you can pick the song. Yeah, I can say that. You mean like the pick the song you wrote or pick well, any no, song? No, the winner picks if the I, song. Okay, winner picks a song, loser sings a song. Yeah. No matter okay. what, I have to write a song. Which is fine. No, which no, is but fine. it can be one of the ones you've already written. Like sure, 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 sure. There's a, there's a whole collection. Yeah, I'm sure you've there's archived all of them, Charles. I need, I've, I've been thinking like I need to because our Slack auto-deletes after like 90 days or something like that. Yeah, you um, need like a, a Prince vault <laughs> where you can keep all those songs do? in. Did you do Lump recently? The Presence of the United States, or was that? Or was that was that was a while ago. Okay. That was easy. If I it's lose, lunch. I'm gonna do that. One. It's lunch. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, you picked, oh, you're picking your. You're like cutting your own switch. No, we'll Kyle. I'll, I'll, <laughs> if I lose, I'll see what's uh, what, what's. I I would love to. List. If I have time, I would love to expand it. We can do like a full karaoke track. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. A musical. Okay. So I there just want you... it to be something that happens on the show, so that we'll actually commit mm-hmm. to doing it, rather than a steak dinner. Because it's like, ah, yeah, I, I mean, we could film you really eating happened. a steak dinner, the winner. <laughs> It'll prove that we bought it. But yeah, there we go. You've heard it here, folks. Whoever loses this uh, predictions contest, as we're calling it now, has to uh, do a little song and dance, I guess, or maybe oh, dancing can be part of it. We can, right. if you want to. Maybe the song's so good that you can't help it. There you go. <laughs> Getting a preview right there from Charles. So yeah, let's get it started. I'll kick things off a prediction that may sound bold but honestly i i the more i think about it the more i think it's going to happen i this is going to be for the xbox showcase Mm. i think we're finally going to see fable again i won't give i don't know how we'll see it i'm not promising gameplay or like a release date but i think that game makes an appearance in some form because it's been a while um and i feel like in a post Redfall world, I, I would imagine Phil Spencer and everyone else is kind of scrambling. Like we gotta, we need to show something. We need to show some cool stuff to get people excited about Xbox again. I don't know if any of the other stuff that they have in the in sort of like the assembly line is ready to go, like a Perfect Dark or even Everwild, even though that's been floating around for Everwild. maybe as long. But I, I. Th- I feel like Fable of like the big things they could show. I I feel like that's got to be far and all, uh, far along enough to show something, right. <laughs> or at least to remind people like, hey, this is this is not dead. You know, Playground's working on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that's that. A good one. Yeah. So you guys all agree, basically, is what you're saying? <laughs> I may <laughs> have agree. just deleted that from my own list of predictions, Marcus. There's no way. <laughs> There we go. Sniped you. That's You're one step closer. I will say, here's here. what I had was slightly different is that we'll see Fable and we'll get a trailer that gives us a better sense of it. Because the original teaser, like, we have no idea. We still don't understand what that game is just based on. We know the there's going to be a fairy. Right. We know there's going to be a fairy. True. But I think, like, whatever they show, it's not going to be gameplay necessarily, but we'll be like, okay, I, I understand kind of what this is going to look like, at least, right? Like, a better st- uh, idea of the art direction and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going right. to put that as my... That's not on my official list. You have the Fable prediction. There we go. All righty. Kyle, you're up next. What you got? Uh, Summer Game Fest. Hazelight uh, gets a big... Like, they're going to announce their next game. And it's going to be a co-op mm-hmm. game. 
Mm. Uh, Hades Light's going to get like a big spotlight, and it will be the new Hades Light game. Ferris, Joseph Ferris is going to be up on stage. They're going to have to bleep him out a bunch when he's talking about this new adventure. But, uh, I feel like he's been very good lately. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Also, it's like, who cares? It's the internet, and no one really, no one's <laughs> too bucked. <by> it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Haze Light's next game will be at Summer Game Fest. We'll be at Keeley's show. And that's, that's It Takes Two, that's a way out. Yes, that's thank those you. those developers, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, which is probably yes. still my favorite Haze-like game, honestly. Ooh. Well, that's not really a Haze-like game. It's a Joseph Ferris game, but, you know, whatever. Right. Semantics. Yeah, that'd be exciting. I, I loved It Takes Two. Uh, there's a part of me that even wonders if they just did a sequel to that because of how apparently really successful that game was. Yeah. It, it takes two more? It takes three? Yeah, it it gets a daughter three. in there. Or maybe it's a it's a sequel, but the adult daughter who's also going through a divorce. Funny enough, and then, <laughs> and then she has to remember the lesson she learned. Funny enough, I just feel like uh, I love hey. how the divorce divorce rates really are. are yeah, oh, I feel man. like that that is a game that had all of its ideas in it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. Like if they, I feel I can't imagine they left a lot on the cutting room floor of that game because it's so dense. Also, right. like, I don't know. I feel like the big takeaway from that game wasn't like, oh, I love the characters in the world. It was like, <laughs> I love playing a good co op platformer. So yeah, I don't really yeah. want to revisit that world. I just want to revisit a good co op game from the Ferris team, you know? Kyle, I bet there's. I almost guarantee there are other ways of killing that elephant that did not make it in the game that they are saving <laughs> <Good point. laughs> for that's a sequel. So, uh, that's, that's a good point. It's going to be a God of War style execution this time. Yeah, I got oh, to nice. play that sequence with my nine, ten-year-old daughter. That was fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was all right. We made okay. It. Okay, that's an interesting prediction. I could, I could see that. Uh, Kyle, what, or Kyle, Charles. excuse me, Charles. We're, we're both <laughs> Kyle now. Um, yes. This is my prediction. Uh, I think it's going to be a slam dunk. I might, I would actually theoretically put money on this. I think we're going to see a trailer for the new Fortnite season. Um, okay. Fortnite season. Pretty safe, Charles. It's pretty safe, specifically <laughs> because SGF is on uh, uh, June eighth, and the next day is the start of the new Fortnite season. Um, or theoretically, the the day the previous season ends. So, so I what's feel already like... been announced? That what the next season is. Uh, I don't think it has yet. They usually do like like really the the day of like the oh. game ends. They do like the update, and then you get like a trailer whenever it might leak before then. And they usually do like a teaser leading up to it. Okay, um, so I think how, we've here's seen how we augment this prediction, Charles. What is okay. a weird, unique IP that's going to be part of it? So they have. I was just going to say there's kind of like some leaks, or maybe it might be a leak. I, I take it with a grain of salt. Um, a, a loading image with Optimus Prime in it. Okay. Oh. Um, there's a new Transformers movie coming out, so I think that's totally viable. Damn, this is still um, so safe. That's absolutely. It is. I mean, there's <laughs> it a is. movie coming. <laughs> also, it's a thing where like Jeff. Ke like, there's some things that, as I was making predictions, I was like, "What does Jeff love?" And one of them is Fortnite. I feel like he's always got Fortnite's always yeah. there. It's one of the biggest things. It's a safe here we go. Safe Here's, pull for him. Add was... on to your prediction, thinking of things that Keeley loves. Hideo Kojima playable in Fortnite. <laughs> oh, in Fortnite. I almost asked, like, do you think like Jeff Keeley would ever be a skin in Fortnite if he loves it so much? Yeah, I mean he was in oh, Dead Stranding. They got they have the assets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, uh, Hideo Kojima in Fortnite. I would love that. It's I think really, he would love that. Yeah, he's really good at sneaking. You use that real life CQC that he. I don't. <laughs> I doubt he still knows how to do it. But he did at one point. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll jot down. I should probably. I don't think I'm, I'm writing, writing these down. predictions down. Okay. okay. All right. Just put a little uh, pillow next to uh, Charles's for how safe it is. <laughs> <laughs> a little safety net, maybe. Yeah, leave, leave an unlocked door right next to that. <laughs> Alrighty, well, my next prediction is maybe a little safer than Fable, but I still think uh, it has enough of a risk to it. I think this is where we finally get a Tekken release date. Okay. Uh, Bandai release Namco date. is one of the... Yes, like an actual release date. Because Bandai Namco is listed as one of the partners for Summer Game Fest. And with all the hype around Street Fighter and now Mortal Kombat, has, you know, that's going to also get its first gameplay showing at summer game fest and that already has a release date and they've been ramping up 
Tekken uh, reveals a lot recently. Like, we just got Brian Fury. Uh, I feel like this is the time where they're going to want to remind everyone, like, hey, you know, Tekken, baby, here it comes. And I think this is when we get the date. I don't, I'm not going to guess the date, <laughs> but I think this is where they finally straight up say, like, hard date, I don't know, November 10, whatever. I don't know what date that is. <laughs> 10 10, Ben 10. Uh, so, yeah. Tech and release date happening at Summer Games. Fest. I really, I really hope it's October tenth. Now, I think that would be amazing. I think that would count as like three points oh. if you could. Yeah, really November tenth is eleven ten, but October tenth is ten ten. You're right. So yeah, ten ten. Or or if it is November tenth, I don't know. Whatever it is, I think I think give give us a day. Give yeah, us a day. Mar- Marcus said November. We'll 10th, say bonus points. 10, 10, if I get it I right, how about that? Okay, okay. I messed up. I messed November tenth. All right. If I don't get the date, like me missing the date has no consequence Correct. but if i get the date then it counts as a bonus point so you're locking in november 10th just arbitrarily right uh i don't even know what date of week that is so let's see like is that like an actual we'll, we'll video you, game we'll like a sunday like a or anything? Help. let's see let's look up november 10th is a uh that's that's like a that's like a friday actually. that's a friday so it's either going to be the 14th is a tuesday games come out on usually on tuesdays or fridays so what do you think marcus all right they need enough of a distance from mortal Kombat, so probably like two months is good enough so uh yeah let's say november 10th only because it's the day after my birthday okay perfect so i i can play tekken if it's november 10th that's gonna be awesome (laughs) (laughs) please don't let me down on this (laughs) so there we go tekken baby all right kyle what's your next pick uh let's see uh Death Stranding Two gets gets an official name. It has because right now it's still a, a, a working title. Death Stranding. Oh, 2. Yeah, I keep forgetting that. I yeah. keep thinking that it's just called. Maybe it should just be called Death Stranding. I don't know if it needs it a, <laughs> I'm not, a title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it should just be called Death Stranding Two. This we don't even need to debate this. But um, I think it's gonna, and it might be Death Stranding Two. Maybe that is, but it will no longer be like working title. It'll maybe we'll get a trailer. Mm. But my the part of the prediction I'm offering up is that it will have an official name after Summer Games Fest. Okay, you think they'll get Stranding Delta? Delta. <laughs> that would be <laughs> amazing. That would be phenomenal. Take, taking shots. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, instead of Snake Eater, it's um, I don't know. What do you eat in that game? Monster Energy drinks. Yeah, and like little gross like worms <laughs> and stuff. Like Worm like, Eater. Yeah. Oof, S- Sam Eater, because it it starts with an S, and his name Sam Bridges. Sam Eater. What were those things called that he eats? They're like little, they like little larva. You know I from, oh yeah, those weird. Yeah, they're like floating all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. Crypto bite. Crypt. Crypto be. Crypto. Crypto biote. Crypto biote. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past Hideo Kojima uh. to call a game crypto biote. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they just said crypto bite in the game though, even if it has a weird spelling. Yeah. Crypto. Okay. So Death you have to... two colon crypto bite. I was gonna say, like, did you want to go for bonus points to guess the subtitle if it gets one? That's no, I have no. I can't, you can't predict what heck it is gonna do. <laughs> you really can't. I don't think he can even predict. I think he wakes up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night, just naming a new character. Uh... Yeah, calls up Gorm Del Toro Gorgon, Gorgon, crying Gorgon, on the phone. <laughs> Still haven't nailed his name. Alrighty, Charles, you're up next. What's your next prediction? Uh, my next prediction, um, I'm gonna guess a, a celebrity appearance. That's my that's my favorite part of the show is when the random celebrity shows up on a, a voice call. Um, I'm I'm gonna hope we can get Idris Elba in. For cyberpunk Man, these are so safe charles <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, I, think, good, I think specifying Kyle. the celebrity makes it riskier because i can, can, yeah. can get it yeah. i can give you a different one also i feel like no you don't uh, have to. I'm just so you're saying go. that the rock isn't going to come back to maybe redeem himself for last year's I, I energy the, drink thing <laughs> that was the best i wrote a piece uh because of the rock thing i did a piece at back at fanbite of uh, where I went back and watched a bunch of old celebrity appearances at E3 events, and I reviewed them all. They're so good, dude. That's it's, it's by <laughs> far my favorite part. Um, I was gonna say also, I I could see them pulling like 
trying to get someone from the Flash movie, but I don't know who's like well, safe enough. I was. Just I mean, to do my, that. even outside of the Flash movie, I was half joking. I was thinking in my head as you made that prediction. I was like, "What celebrity?" Okay, we had Al Pacino, which is like was the weirdest <laughs> one. Maybe it's like okay, yeah. he has grandkids playing video games, and maybe that's what got him in the door. And that kind of made me think. It's like who's like grandparent age who would be really unexpected? And in my head, I was like michael keaton yeah and yeah and i was like and then and then you brought up the flash movie and i was like he is in the flash movie so michael, michael keaton. keaton that's my celebrity <laughs> for and, and maybe one more michael keaton coming to Fortnite. <laughs> i could see As that batman like the, just michael like 80 keaton? like 1989 <laughs> batman and Fortnite. i would be so funny if it was just michael keaton but probably I would, I, would, I would rather have that than michael keaton batman i think let's get him we all, need more normal or just give me like Fortnite. a all his a Michael Keaton characters. pack. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah. Yeah, like just have all his roles like multiplicity, Beetlejuice, Vulture. Oh, Beetlejuice. That's already in there. They did announce They're making a, a sequel to that. Officially announced a they sequel. They are. So maybe Beetlejuice coming to Fortnite at some point. Heck yeah. Kids get to know about but, the juice. So so is it are are you mad that I said Idris Elba? Is that too easy or is no, that I, like I, I, no, I, I I I think it's almost guaranteed he's gonna be there, right? I mean okay, to promote okay. Cyberpunk, but yeah, Do you think know. is it is it that? I I I think there's he's some Knuckles and a new Netflix show, like Oh know, yeah. He's he's he a gamer is now. Knuckles. Is he a I'm, gamer? Do we know that he plays? Yeah, I think games he, I think he likes video games, yeah. Oh okay. I think I feel like I have a weird I track that in my head a lot like I'll listen to celebrity <laughs> on, on podcasts and stuff and if video games come up I always like earmark it in my head you know mm. Daniel Craig big gamer you know that kind of thing right do you do you rank them this is getting off topic but do you rank them based on what game they say of like how hardcore they are about it? like if someone oh, says yeah. Mario Kart are you like gamer or if it's like oh yeah I loved well, I don't know Street Fighter 5 it's common knowledge now that Ben Schwartz, the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, mm. loves video games. But years and years ago, he made a Final Fantasy VI reference in an episode of Comedy <laughs> Bang Bang. And ever since then, I've been like earmarked like Ben mm. Schwartz. He's he's not just a Mario Kart guy. He's I I'm gonna make a reference to Final Fantasy VI during improv guy. Like that's <laughs> that's a special type of gamer right there. So. <laughs> that's now, my kind now, of gamer and what well, the thing was is he would come through minneapolis and i would always try to reach out to him to try to get him to come to the game informer offices like before he was sonic the hedgehog mm, you know, I was like, right. you know final fantasy 6 you're gonna be a cool guy to talk to about video games but now everybody knows now he's like a bit now he's like now he's not ashamed of it anymore too late <laughs> <laughs> all righty uh back to me uh this is gonna be an ubisoft joint i think they're gonna one more time guys bring out skull and bones and say okay for reals it's gonna come out <laughs> on this day we got a, another release date for it it's gonna i swear to god we're gonna stick to this one for, and so that's release date is the prediction right like it is right because it had one and then it got delayed and you know i think this is going to be their latest like okay i think we figured out what this what's happening with this thing it, I I, a good one. yeah and you know if we want to do a bonus point I could see them. I could almost see them stealth launching it. Like it's like it's out today, almost to sort of rinse their Whoa. hands of it. Finally, of like, <laughs> there's no reason to give this another big marketing push because we kind of did that with the last release date. So like, honestly, just move. honestly, you know, yeah, like here it's out. Just play it for the love of God. Just play it so we can never talk about it again. <laughs> I don't think they can really do that with physical release games, though, right? Like that's hard. Oh, that's true. Well, that's actually, true. you know what? I take it back because Nintendo did Metroid Prime, and the way they handled that was like the digital versions available now. You can buy it physically in stores next week. Is how, mm. they, oh, did, okay. how they did that one. So maybe that's how they would do Skull and Bones. Okay, I don't think I knew Metroid had a physical release, but mm -hmm. yeah, let's say they do that. They're just looking at Nintendo like that's a good idea. But yeah, there we go. That's Skull and Bones is is back for real this time. We promise. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'll stay on the Ubisoft train here. Um, Splinter Cell remake trailer with mm. gameplay. We with gameplay, what the gameplay of Splinter Cell remake will look like? Not because we know it exists; they don't need to tease mm -hmm. it. But we want to see what it looks like at this point. So I think that's what we get from Ubisoft. For a, a potential bonus point, do you think Michael Ironside 
Dude, Are we keeping track of all the bonus points? Is he? <laughs> like, is he every, um, is do you like, think he's still Sam Fisher? Do you think we hear that voice or no? Uh, hold on. This is a Michael Ironside. Did he pass away recently, or did I make that up? Wait, did he? I just want to make sure because I I I feel like that uh, maybe I'm misremembering. Okay, no, totally. Yeah, okay. Michael Ironside will be in the game. Yeah. yeah you heard it here for, yeah, first of all. Michael Ironside's cool. Ironside still with us. <laughs> Bonus point, <laughs> Ironside alive and in the game. Uh, apologies to Mr. Ironside. I, I think I just, I, for some reason, I feel like I read that headline at some point, but I was uh, mistaken. Okay. But yeah, I think he'll be in the game. And I think it'll even be a little weird. I think it'll be like, you might be a little old to be playing this version of Sam Fisher, but it's okay. We'd rather have you here than not here. So, Okay. All right, Charles, back to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue Ubisoft train. Um, I am going to say when we see gameplay of the new Just Dance, because it's guaranteed. <laughs> I think if you guys I, can see Kyle sure. rolling his when, eyes right no, now, audience. No, 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 that's that's not the prediction. That's okay. gonna happen. That's happening every time. Oh, okay, okay. When we good. see it, um, I think Lizzo is going to perform. This I like. This I think is a good. Wait, okay. why? Why Lizzo? Is she? Because she's the best, <laughs> Charles. Come on. She would. She. It's. It's never. Like, is there a connection that I don't know? <laughs> no. It's always. It's always. It's always. You know, pop singer. I feel like Lizzo is not busy right now. She doesn't have a new <laughs> album. No, no, no. Okay, let me clarify. Let me clarify. She's not like touring. I don't think she doesn't have like a new album that's about to come out. But she did like some of the biggest songs of last year that would definitely be in a new just dance oh yeah um that's my pick that's my uh uh pop singer of choice yeah. it's thick 30 you guys come on, Get on it. <laughs> do you think she wears like a weird wacky costume like all the other just dance like she comes out as like a banana uh, or something or <laughs> i hope so yeah. i think she i mean she probably plays the flute right like that's her yeah. big uh well she dresses as sailor moon a lot um, but they probably can't do that in just yeah, she have to be an assassin or something that actually would be really cool on like genuinely I actually I, I don't I don't talk about it a lot but I'm actually in, in a pretty active just dance household like we usually get the new just dance oh year. yeah and um, yet you won't do any TikTok dances and I won't do any TikTok dances but um <laughs> like there's there's obviously there's a lot of great songs in just dance but they don't usually have the singers like in the game. Mm. But I think that would be something that Lizzo would weirdly be into. Like she would be mm -hmm. like, "Yeah, I want to be in Just Dance. Yeah, I'll come down yeah. and yeah. put on, you know, whatever that weird clothing that you guys have and <laughs> choreograph and dance." Like I could see her being the one, you know, that would be up for it. Where like um, other, you know, I don't think Taylor Swift has taken time out of her schedule to go nah, no. do Just Dance or you know, um, any other female pop singers that I would have off the top of my head which i don't right now <laughs> the one the one i remember standing out to me is like one of the first times when when i went from e3 is so exciting i'm so young i love seeing video games shifting over to oh sometimes this is kind of cringy huh was uh, jason derulo performing um <laughs> i remember seeing that live stream being like wow this feels weird i don't feel like anyone in the room was ready for this <laughs> Um, I feel like Lizzo would be better. I feel like she she She'd could command awesome. the stage a little better. I love how specific this prediction. Like this, this is my favorite Charles prediction. And maybe just I was. Lizzo. I'll tell you this, Marcus. I was as I was gearing up to this. I was like Ubisoft prediction. I want to. I want to be on theme. I think this is gonna be it. I did bail from a last second. I was gonna be like Beyond Good and Evil two, and then I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to throw my chance away completely. We don't know if that game exists anymore. Yeah, no. It's on it's on a flash drive somewhere. <laughs> also, uh, real quick, did you guys hear uh, Prince of Persia not going to be there? Yeah, the, I think I do. the Sands of Time no. remake, right? Yeah, like yeah. apparently development is sort of like basically restarted on it. Yeah, that yeah. Game, I don't know what's going on. I love Sands of Time. I'm excited for that, but I don't know what's going on with that game. Yeah, it's kind of wild, especially looking at what it was originally. You're like, this wasn't. This doesn't seem like this would be as big a lift as it apparently is. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, not to make assumptions about development. I mean, development's always difficult of any. Game, of course, but yeah, it does seem like like a more straightforward, right? Like kind of game to remake. It's just like pretty linear levels with pretty straightforward combat. You know, but I don't know. Yeah. So 
I, in a different time, I would have predicted that game would finally show up and get something, but then they uh, pulled the rug out from under me, so never mind. All right. Um, my next prediction, I'm going to pull this out of my butt a little bit, but I think that... Do I want to say this? Now I'm wondering. Now I'm questioning if this is a good idea. Lizzo and Fortnite. Lizzo and Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lizzo's in Death Stranding. Uh. (laughs) I'm open to all these, by the way. Lizzo and Death Stranding, Lizzo and Fortnite. Bring it on. We just need more Lizzo content. More Lizzo. Yeah. Uh, You know, what if Ken Levine walked on stage at Summer Games Fest <laughs> and talked about Judas a little bit. You know, the last yeah, time yeah. or the first time we okay. saw that game was at the Game Awards. So the Keeley connection is there, last year's Game Awards. And maybe we get a small update about Judas. You know, maybe he talks a little bit more about the premise. Like, if if not live, then maybe he does, like, you know, we get one of those, like, pre-recorded developer videos where, like... <clears throat> They all pretend they're being interviewed, but they're like just talking to each other. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, one of the, like, yeah, I've been working on Judas for ten years, and I think it's the best thing we ever did. Man, I want my my alternate prediction of that, Marcus, is I don't think Ken Levine ever is the face of Judas. I think they very quietly acknowledge that he is involved in it, but don't publicly make him a face for that game just because of all the issues with crunch and everything, and you know, like. You think he they put him in a the closet somewhere? Right now. Um, okay. Then let's just say, what's this? Uh, what's the studio? Cloud Chamber? Uh, what gosh, what his studio? Um, it's, it's, it's Cloud Chamber, right? Or no, Ghost Story. Go, yes. I think Cloud, yeah. I think Cloud Chamber games. is the studio. Yeah. yeah. I think Cloud Chamber is the studio that's working on the, bio, the new Bioshock. Maybe that's why I'm getting those wires crossed. Right. Yeah. Um, which, you know, feel welcome to predict if we'll see that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Basically, I guess it comes down to Judas appears in some form. Uh, yeah, Judas appears. Good. By the way, I'm not trying to pull the rug out from under your prediction. I think it's a fine prediction. I just and uh, it sounds like you're pulling the rug out. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm, hurt, hurt, right. I'm hurt by it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right, Kyle. Uh, I guess this, this is probably our last one, right? We're just doing four, right? Oh uh, yeah, we can. We can make this last one. Maybe we could do like, yeah. We'll do, let's say this is the last one. Can we can we do can we do four predictions and maybe one like hail mary hope, like sure. not necessarily <laughs> like not not educated guess at all. Just like if the world is perfect, this will happen. Right. I think okay. that's a good one. Yeah. Um, my a simple kind of straightforward one for the Xbox showcase. Um, Final Fantasy VII remake fi- is finally coming to Xbox. Oh, okay. and it has like a. Like the release date for part one is is very soon, you know. Okay. Within a few, like before the end of the year, you know, or maybe even that day, and it's on Game Pass, you know, just to kind of make it sort of exciting and weird. Um, but it's so strange to me that that's not on Xbox. Like, yeah, it blew past that exclusive, uh, yeah. the exclusivity window mm-hmm. expiration date. Uh, okay. and Square Enix is listed as one of the Summer Games Fest partners. So yeah, so that's that's my last sort of my prediction is is uh final Fantasy VII remake part one finally on xbox and bonus points game pass it's available right now mm-hmm. i like that mm-hmm. okay charles uh my next one i think it's been long enough this was teased a few years ago um i want to see this game called avowed I'm pretty sure oh. it's from the oh, right. Outer Worlds people. Yeah, Obsidian. Obs- yeah. yeah. Which is not, yeah, Outer Worlds is former Obsidian folks. Okay, so this is from Obsidian. Yes, Avowed is Obsidian. Okay, I was confused. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it looked looked like a Skyrim-like. We got like a cinematic trailer a while ago, and I remember being like, this looks pretty cool. It was like first-person magic, <laughs> magic one hand, sword in another hand. I was like, I'm in. Um, I uh, feel like Charles, in terms real of quick, you're totally right. It is it is Outer Worlds is Obsidian and Avowed is Obsidian. Okay. So I was yeah for some reason I thought they were two different studios, but that's yeah, exactly what it is. Avowed always seemed like it was like, hey, remember how we basically made our own Fallout with Outer Wilds? What if we just made our own Elder Scrolls? Okay, <laughs> yes, 
for a second i was like uh i thought i was wrong yes that's my thing is i like i liked outer world so much i feel like they could do a elder scrolls also well and i feel like they you know we were talking about xbox i feel like has both a need of games and a need for better press so i think to to see that i think would be really cool so you think uh gameplay pre-rendered trailer like what do you think I feel like we're due for gameplay. I mean, maybe that was... I think when we saw it last, I thought it was closer to coming out than it was, but I guess COVID happened. Um, but yeah, I, I think we can see some gameplay. I don't know if it's coming out this year or anything, but something simple. Okay, now I want to see yeah. when that trailer was. Yeah, I'm actually looking up the same. It was uh, 2020. Was 2020. Oh, 2020. Okay. Yeah. yeah 2020. Um, You yeah. know what's funny? I... I wish you best of luck with that charles and i say that because ever since i've worked here i think i have predicted an avowed appearance at every <laughs> showcase <laughs> since avowed and like whether it's summer games fest or the game awards mm -hmm. and i have been wrong every time and i did not say it this year <laughs> intentionally it's like maybe i just maybe I, I i maybe i should just like you know stop yep. but of course this would be the year that it winds up being true is when someone else predicts it so of course <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you're right because I I love Obsidian. I really liked Outer Wilds a lot, specifically or Outer Worlds. Sorry, Outer <laughs> Wilds is the other game that it's I also possible really to get those two games not mixed up. Can't yeah, we're still doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I hope you're right because I I really like that game. So now we're on to Hail Marys. Uh, boy. Man, you mentioned Beyond Good and Evil too. Um, that's that's too much hail for me. <laughs> too much hail for you. Not too much hail, Mary. Not Mary. No. <laughs> Googling now. Um, I don't know if you guys have ones ready, but I was sort of doing my own research. I was trying to figure out when the Master Trials came out for Breath of the Wild, which was the mm. first DLC pack. Breath of the Wild. What's came... it? Oh, do you have it? Yeah, Breath of the Wild came out in March of 2017. And the mm -hmm. Master Trials, which was the first of two expansion passes, came out in June. Okay. Um, so hey, I think yeah. the timeline could work where, like, if we see some Nintendo stuff, I would love to see what the DLC plans are for Tears of the Kingdom, if there are any. I would, mm -hmm. I would love to have a comparable thing, you know, Master Trials or whatever. Um, and then the other, the second one, what was it called? The Champion's Ballad was a little... Yeah. A little was the more interesting of the two, but just to even know that that's in the works for Tears of the Kingdom would be really exciting. Now that you say that, my Hail Mary, it's it's double Hail Mary because it's a prediction for a show that might not even happen. Uh, <laughs> but for Nintendo, I'm going to say Metroid Prime 4. And I think I, I said this on the uh, on all things Nintendo, but if there is a Nintendo showcase, I think this is where we'll finally get an update on Metroid Prime 4, especially now that Zelda is out the door and that's like not the mm -hmm. big focus anymore. Uh yeah, I think I think we get something on that game. <laughs> I'd love that. Yeah. Right, um, I feel I feel time. the I feel the need to fit in with the Nintendo theme, so I will give my my Nintendo hair Hail Mary. Um, I want Super Mario Odyssey two, baby. I feel like it's been so long since we got a Mario game that was new. We've yeah. gotten lots of like ports and stuff, but I think. Odyssey was the last like mainline Mario game we got. Uh, Bowser's Fury, kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, I don't know, but even that's right. We're all sh shrugging our shoulders with Asterix. Yeah, Is yeah. That really, a mainline? I don't know. Um, I just love like I uh, Mario Odyssey is is like far and away my favorite Mario game. I don't know what what it is about the like traversal in that game that like feels so good to me, but I played it through like several times since it came out um now, and the yeah is, i thought there would be yeah you go ahead i was gonna say now the question is would it will it be odyssey 2 or do you think it'll be super mario something brand whatever new? you're predicting odyssey 2 specifically or just a new 3d mario game if, if it's a hail mary i'm i'm predict i'm predicting super mario odyssey 2 specifically right. um i and and I'm predicting it because I feel like there hasn't been a new mainline Mario game in a while. If a new one came out, I would like pull back from my Odyssey prediction, Odyssey mm -hmm. two prediction, probably. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I said this on Brian's show, but you know, we've gone the same amount of time without a new Mario as we have Zelda because they both came out the same year, Breath of the Wild and Odyssey. Yeah. So like, if that's something to go by, the the 
countdown timer should have expired, right? And <laughs> we should be hearing about it now. I do yeah. wonder if you asked Nintendo if they would say if their response would be like, "Oh, we just released Bowser's Fury a few years ago." Like, you know what I mean? I yeah. wonder if they think it's bigger than we give it credit. For yeah, they're like, "Why are you guys being so greedy? We just gave you one." Yeah, I mean, which to be clear, I love Bowser's Fury. I thought that was mm-hmm. fantastic. But I, it, but you guys are, I'm with you. I think we're all on the same page. It's like it didn't feel like a new 3D Mario. It felt like a cool somewhat small little Mario experiment that was really fun. Yeah. I mean, it's an ad- it was essentially it was an add-on to an existing game. Yeah. 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 Like, it's really all it comes down to. So it's like, that shouldn't count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I still haven't played that, by the way. I, I love Fury? 3D. Yeah, I, I love oh, 3D. I played... A re- I know. I played it's OG new, 3D. It's World a new mainline 3D Mario game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm cheap, and I just haven't ponied up the $60 to, to buy it. Uh, I need to. It's it, it's hard, because I think, because I've already played through 3D World. Uh, yeah. And though I love that game, it's like, uh, it's still like that God. game. I'm playing $60, essentially, for like a smaller add-on thing. Yeah, it's too bad you can't uh, buy Bowser's Fury as just like a $20 DLC yeah. or something. It would... It would it, it, it's great. It's it's pretty substantial. It's probably like I don't know six hours or something total to play, maybe even longer. But yeah, to it's attached to a whole other very good game that I'm with you, Marcus. Like I already played that. I did. I did the sort of. I got every freaking star in that game. I'm, I'm good. I don't need to. Yeah. to play and it. I played it with four people, so I played it the best way you could play it, oh, yeah, like yeah. from start to finish with a full party. Uh, so yeah, but. Alrighty, so that is our. Uh, oh, Kai, Kai, you said yours, right? Am I? Yeah, my Hail Mary was uh, Tears of the Kingdom DLC. Right, right, just right. Just details. Like, you know, there's not going to be like. It's not. It's just like we are working. It'll be like the way they did the, where we're, the sequel to the Breath <laughs> of the Wild teaser many years ago. Yeah. It'll just be like Onuma will be in, you know, in Purgatory or wherever he stands to give those direct presentations. And they'll let Fujibayashi <laughs> stand next to him for once because he's they need to start he's the director of breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom like they should let him have some of the spotlight but they'll be standing together hand in hand obviously i don't think i need to stay there. yeah fingers uh, locked fingers right fingers not just locked. Locked. And, they'll, <laughs> and they'll say and just so you know we are working on dlc for tears of the kingdom please stay tuned for more information and by I'll the way it. wind waker and twilight princess on switch now bye <laughs> <laughs> God, i can't imagine that's that's a, that's one for me, Marcus. Where I'm like, I can't even guess that anymore. Yes. I can't even predict Wind Waker on Switch anymore. Oh, that's your avowed. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, there we go. That is our predictions. Uh, either we are going to look like the smartest people that have ever existed, or the biggest idiots to ever grace <laughs> uh, games media, and then you know someone's going to have to do a funny little song and dance. So. You know, let us, you know, as the, the viewers, let us know your predictions for who's got the right predictions. Who do oh, you, yeah. We'll who do you predict out, is going to blow this thing? We'll have to figure out, too, if we're if we're all just wrong, what do we do with that information? No, oh, like, there's a tie in any way? We all we'll just have to just sync synchronize. <laughs> we all, yeah, we all learn a K-pop dance together. No, I don't yeah, want to dance. I did not agree to dance. <laughs> <laughs> you can wave your arms around or something. Uh, uh, you got arms? He just dance, arms. Kyle. Oh, Arms 2. That's my other Hail Mary prediction. Mm. Arms 2 coming to Nintendo Switch in 2023. <laughs> arms 2. They've got two arms now. <laughs> All right. Well, before we jump into listener emails, let's get some housekeeping done. Thanks for uh, listening, guys. Leave us a podcast review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you leave us a five star review, we appreciate it. We tend to read them on the show we don't have any this week but you know or leave us a one star if you hate this if you hate me hosting uh you know let me know so that i can cry in the corner please uh i need that every now and then a good cry uh but yeah you know go on there and give us <laughs> give us a good review i would appreciate it and check us out on all of our social channels like our twitch channel twitch.tv slash game informer check us out on youtube we've got two channels we've got our game informer youtube channel as well as the Game Informer Show's YouTube channel, which is where all of our uh, stream archives live. Also, a reminder that single issues of Game Informer magazine are now available. You can go to GameStop.com slash Game Informer to pick up uh, the most recent five issues. The Final Fantasy issue is now on sale to purchase individually, and you can buy single issues for $5.99, 
without a subscription. So if you are someone that doesn't want to subscribe, or if you just like to collect them, I know a lot of people love just collecting the issues for the amazing cover art that we have, especially in these recent uh, issues. You can go do that uh, commitment-free, basically. And be sure to check us out on social media. I am on Twitter at Marcus Stewart 7 That's the number seven. Be sure to check out Kyle Hilliard at Kyle M. Hilliard. And Charles, I don't actually know your Twitter handle. <laughs> what is your I'm, Twitter handle? I'm at ChuckDuck365. I knew it involved ducks, but I was trying not to confuse it with Rebecca Valentine, who also has duck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are the two ducks that I think Which of. It doesn't even rhyme in her at so I don't know what that's about. <laughs> She's really crossing the line there. <laughs> I don't know what. And be sure to also check out our other podcast, uh, All Things Nintendo, hosted by Brian Shea. And also uh, Kyle and, our, and myself, our ongoing Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Super Replay every Friday on our Twitch channel. We're, uh, you know, we hit a wall last episode, but we, we managed to get over it. And I think it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out, Kyle. I promise. I think so. Yeah. It's yeah. Good we're, make, we're building some good stuff. And also shout out, of course, to our amazing producer, uh, Matt Storm, a.k.a. DJ Stormageddon. Be sure to check out their podcast, Fun and Games, as well as the Reignite podcast about all things Bioware. They do awesome, awesome work on our podcast. So give them a listen. And with that said... Let's jump to some listener emails. We got a couple of questions from the community Discord. And if you want to send us a question, you can either email us at podcast at gameinformer.com. Or, as I mentioned, if you're a part of the Discord channel, just hit us up in the uh, Game Informer Show's uh, channel in our Discord. And first and foremost, this is our, excuse me, our first question by Mr. Zachary Pliggy. Actually, they've got a couple of questions that we're going to touch on, with number one being, with how well Street Fighter VI is reviewing and what Tekken 8 has been showing off, do you think we'll see another resurgence in the fighting game space? I, I, I think one always kind of accompanies a good Street Fighter, right? Like, four mark a resurgence, six is probably going to mark a resurgence. I feel like it's a lot It's a lot on Street Fighter's shoulders. <laughs> More than <laughs> Tekken and Mortal Kombat. But, uh... It's also, when was the last time all three of these games released in the same year, you know? I mean, mm, Tekken, the, the, the jury's still out on that, but I sure, actually, sure, sure. I'm trying to remember... No November 10th. But, has, you know. has a Mortal Kombat in a in a mainline like number Street Fighter ever come out in the same year like, before? It I'm actually like they would want to avoid it if they could. I feel like they've maybe in the earlier day, but I'm actually trying to think. And I'm, not, I'm again, I'm not counting like various Street Fighter re-releases. I'm like talking about like the first of like the number, like Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Three. Uh, not counting the Alpha games. Mm -hmm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to think. Oh, so Street Fighter Five was. Oh, actually, I think Street Fighter 4 might because Street Fighter 4 was 08, I think. And I believe that was also Mortal Kombat versus DC, which <laughs> yeah, 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 technically, yeah. I mean, it is considered Mortal Kombat 8. I'm kind so, of pulling up the two Wikipedia timelines to see. Mortal Kombat 92, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting was 92. I don't know. This is a complicated list. To... Whatever. Yeah, like I said, whatever I'm not the case. re-releases of <laughs> Street Fighter. Street Fighter but... Alpha. I do think it's interesting that, like, we, we were talking about, like, whether or not we were going to play Street Fighter early in this episode, and I was like, I'm interested in it, but I think I'm more interested in Mortal Kombat, and just the idea that, like, you know, all, all the fighting games feel different, they attract, like, slightly different audiences in a lot of cases, and I think just, like, seeing a big release of one is going to make people more interested in other, like, it's not just... Am I going to play this one fighting game that came out this year? It's like, oh, there's so many. Maybe there's one that's like a better fit for me. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think I, I could definitely see that happening uh, yeah. personally. And it could be the other thing of like, you play one and it makes you want to play the other ones. You're like, oh, I like fighting games now. Maybe I'll try. Like, I really like Street Fighter. I'd never gotten into Street Fighter. Maybe I'll check out this Mortal Kombat thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you know, it could always have that effect. But By the yeah, way, I feel Street Fighter 3 uh, and, Street and Mortal Kombat 4. Both came out in 97. Okay. Man, 
it's funny because like at least in my opinion two of the weakest entries in both of those series <laughs> came out the same year not a not a big Mortal Kombat How do you four feel like or Mortal Kombat versus DC is that mainline Mortal Kombat or no? It technically it is because it is counted as Mortal Kombat eight. Okay, then, oh, like, that was number, yeah. Shoot. That was my first Mortal Kombat game because I really wanted to play as Superman. Also, I was eight years old, so you know. Yeah, so Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe and Street Fighter Four same. Year. <laughs> okay, so I was right. About There's that. a couple of these, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, I don't like it's. Like yeah, I don't know. It feels significant though. Still, like, yeah, we had to we had to search yeah, that. It out. doesn't happen often, you no, know. No, no, yeah. no. For the the those planets to align like that, so you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, Street Fighter Six is really good. Hopefully, Mortal Kombat One is just as good, and it's not a, a new Mortal Kombat Four. But I, <laughs> I I'm pretty confident it'll be fine. <laughs> you know? yeah, they've, they've, they've been doing pretty good work there over the lately. I forgot to mention this real quick during the Street Fighter segment, but I I don't know if you guys are big enough Street Fighter fans to notice this, but all the even-numbered Street Fighter games are always awesome, and it's always the odd-number ones that are sort of like the, we, we drop the ball in some way. I mean, Street <laughs> Fighter 1 it was, it kind of doesn't count because it was like its own weird thing, and it was just like, it, it does not resemble what it would become later. But like Street Fighter 3, the original version of it is not, at least I didn't really like it that much, because that's when they jettisoned is most of the third, established roster. Third Strike, though, is like Third Strike's the good one. Right. I think that's where they added. Yeah, like that is okay. the best version of Street Fighter 3. But I'm talking about like the original. Right. We have a list it. on GameInformer.com from 2019, the 30 greatest fighting games of all time. And we have Street Fighter 3, uh, third, third Strike as number one. Wait, what? As number one? Mm -hmm. Was this before Street Fighter? I, I just I put I Street Fighter so. 4 over it. <laughs> it was a big deal. I, hey, I, I remember a serial. Valiant, valiantly uh, making his pitch for why he thought that should be number one. Okay, so now I know who to blame. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Directly, yeah. Alrighty, but yeah, and then, but I don't know, even number Street Fighters it seems like you're always going to be in for a great time. It's basically the yes, point yeah, of yeah. that. <laughs> uh, and uh, Pliggy's next question is, what is one game you'd be stoked to see at Summer Games Fest, but you know it won't be there? Sort of a play on what we just did. And his other question was uh, asking for a long shot, but we we just did that. So yeah. like, well, that's your first part. Like, what's a game that you would love to see that you are absolutely convinced is not going to show up? Okay. Uh, I mean, I think I know. We know for a fact, Silk Song isn't going to be there. I think they've said that. Did they say um, it specifically, like as part of the delay? Or that it. I guess I assumed it was part of the delay because they said it. I. I I feel like when they would delay it and said like, hey, we're going to take a little longer on this. I feel like if they were going to have a big trailer at SGF, then I think they would have said it there. Um, but I feel like that's pretty unlikely. Uh, at least that's just me. Maybe it does show up. Yeah, I mean, Armored Core will probably make an appearance, probably at Summer Games Fest. There'll probably be a new Armored Core trailer. Yeah. But oh man, I, I forgot about that. But the thing I want from from software is, I don't know if it's called Elden Ring 2 or if it's called like something if, if maybe it's they've they've done it before where it's like they'll just make a new franchise right like this like whatever the follow-up to elden ring is whatever the open world from software game is elden ring 2 maybe like they're working on it right like we have to assume well, they're working on they're it. working elden on that expansion that they announced yeah yeah so are you saying like, even with that already floating out there the expansion i guess i'm more excited for like a proper sequel than i am an expansion if that mm -hmm. makes sense I just, right. whatever that team whatever the Elden Ring team is actively working on cuz you I'm making a lot of assumptions here but I imagine like there's a part of that team that is working on the next Elden Ring whatever that may be and then another part of the team is working on the expansion and then there's another faction of from software that's working on Armored Core maybe I'm, I'm imagining this team much larger than they actually are but I mean we're not going to see like an Elden Ring sequel you know at SGF right, yeah. like it's too early for that but I would like to I'd like to know what that is Okay Um I don't know Elder Scrolls 6 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I they're would love Starfield that. they're not going to Yeah there's no way in hell that shows up <laughs> yeah. So, yeah there that that fits the the question well Uh let's see and our last question comes from Snake Eater It's funny cuz I I kind of answered this for myself but i would like to know what you guys think uh they simply ask will we see metro prime 4 at summer games fest and why does nintendo refuse to show us it 
I mean, I don't think we're going to see it there. I think Nintendo's just going to show it on their own terms if they get a chance, rather than... Oh, yeah. not I mean, Maybe showing it on their own terms, technically, if they show it. Well, sure. I'm saying, they like, chose as, to. Because they could give it, it, Keely, part of their... They could give oh. Keely a trailer, right? Or they could mm-hmm. be like, we'll just do a Metroid Direct in two weeks. And then we have... Then we don't even have to... We have full control. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. I think I read... Or I interpreted his question as like not necessarily Summer Games Fest, the show itself, but in like the season. Oh, the that's like the shorthand for like it the way E three used to be. Now we're just called June Summer Games Fest. Um but yeah, if it's like if the question is like, do we think it'll be on Keeley's show, then no way. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that. I mean, <laughs> Nintendo stuff has shown up there before. I mean, Breath of the Wild's first proper showcase was on summer game fest with onuma and miyamoto playing it on a wii u gamepad like that was the first time we saw proper breath of the wild gameplay which was see, huge but that was that was e3 right no that was well it was, was it was uh you know i think it was the game awards now i think about it because summer game fest wasn't a thing that existed yet yeah but that gosh, that's yeah that's where they showed like looking in the distance and marking stuff on the map and the the paraglider like that was mm. the first time we saw any of that stuff and yeah. it was on one of keely's stages you see there's a difference kyle see that was that was the wii u era that's when nintendo was like stressing they need some help this is this is now switch era making billion dollar movies nintendo now they're they can nice. big league everybody they're like we don't need we don't need your dinky stage no more. <laughs> Y'all see that movie we just put out? Have you seen the Zelda numbers? <laughs> uh, that's true. That's a good point. Okay. Imagine, uh, imagine Jeff backstage like, oh, it's not dinky. <laughs> dinky that. stage. It's a really big... Andrew's elbow's here, guys. God. <laughs> he walked the stage. It's got that, <laughs> the, el- the elbow rub. Uh, Charles, did you have an answer for this? Uh, do you think we'll see Prime or... Uh, you know... I... Metroid is a series that I feel like half the time doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like, like it. I I know it's coming at some point. They've announced it in theory. Um, I don't. I don't feel like it is, but I don't have a good reason as to why. It just feels like it's been floating around for so long. They also did the thing where they kind of restarted development. That was a uh, while ago. Though. A while ago. I just something about that in like my internal clock felt like a big enough push that like I don't know. I feel like it'll I feel like it'll be a while. But I mean obviously I'd be pleasantly surprised if it was there. Yeah. yeah I, I, I feel like the restart at this point is long enough now to where it feels like they theoretically could show something. That was mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. three years ago that they announced that, right? At this point. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like pre pandemic. Yeah, uh, I was sitting. I was in. La- I was in a Los Angeles Convention Center room. I remember when I saw it. So like that, t- to me, that time stamps it in my head of like that was probably 2018. That was the last time I was like at an E3, and mm-hmm. E3 existed proper. You know. Yeah, and even coupling in like any disruptions that the pandemic might have caused and like slowed things down, it's like that's still been what like five years yeah i mean it was it was the same e3 as uh tears of the kingdom was announced so um oh is that right? pretty sure yeah. i'm pretty sure that that e3 had you know actually uh, i think it might breath have... of the wild sequel and metroid prime and bayonetta 3 it was all like but the, the last two we only got logos for so it was like who knows when that's happening. it was like when they were announced i think oh, no, no, Bayon- e- bayonetta 3 was announced when the switch launched or like the same year that yeah. was 2017 Me- metroid and... prime was 2017 Metroid Prime the, the initial announcement in before they oh gotcha yeah and then well then I'm wrong sequel to Breath of the Wild was 2019 was when they had yeah. that announcement so Ooh, oh, yeah, okay. which would but that might have been the year that the restart was announced right because like yes, original Metroid so. Prime Four was announced in 2017 that's when then, Retro gotcha. took back over because it was Bandai Namco for a while and then Retro had yeah wasn't it Cyber Connect Two that was tied to it oh, originally that sounds right yeah yeah then Retro yeah then they were like Retro's gonna do it again uh, <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Timelines. Time is weird. Mine was, now. Mine was completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pre pandemic, who, who can remember the before yeah, times at I this mean, point? It, yeah, right? it's all a blur at this point. Seriously. Did it really happen? Honestly? Uh, uh, did they make a Metroid Prime 4 teaser? <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Are we getting another one? Uh, okay. So, yeah, I hope that's uh, that answers those confusing answers to your question, uh, Snake Eater. Thanks for sending me that. Thanks for. 
listening, everyone. We're going to wind down this episode of the Game Informer Show, the the Marcus Stewart hosted edition. Uh, we'll never do this again, except for next week. Yeah, you did great, man. I love it. You did an awesome job. Thank you. I appreciate it, Kyle. I appreciate everyone for listening. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, check out uh, all of the plugs, GameInformer.com. Visit us there. Read our stuff. Go to Game Informer, Twitch.tv, Game Informer YouTube channel. Subscribe to the magazine. Buy the single issues. All that stuff that I said before, you should just do that again. That'd be great. <laughs> <Just continue laughs> to be doing that. Yeah, don't stop. And until next week, we shall see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Yeah.